Yeah, you mentioned that um, you know you and I have only a certain amount of time left, and we might find out that maybe there was life once on Mars, or we'll find out what's going on with Jupiter. Obviously, I, uh, younger kids are gonna have a little bit more time than us because they'll probably live longer than us. My boys are five and six, and probably pretty confident they'll both live over a hundred, uh, based on science. Um, are you gonna? Do you regret that you won't be alive to see some incredible discoveries? And you write about death in this book. How do you view death and the concept of eternal life and these deep philosophical questions, you know, uh, in the perspective of the universe? Yeah, so in other words, uh, what does my knowledge of the universe impart on my thinking regarding life and death? I mean, that's another way to word what you asked. And I would say, there's all this talk about will we one day live forever and that may we might one day have that power okay and there's something called the escape velocity of medicine so for example um let's say you're born and they figure out how to extend your life by two years okay and then they extend your life by five years a next generation and they extend your life and so uh, if every year you're alive, they figure out how to extend life another year, then that's escape velocity. It means you'll never die. Yeah. Because the rate at which the progress is happening is at the same rate that you are getting older. Okay? So I don't have reason to think that day won't come based on how much we are learning about human physiology. If you want to go there, we need another planet. Sorry, just don't do it unless we have terraformed Mars, something Elon totally wants to do. Why do you then say you that? Because we're, we're having less kids, Neil. Is that necessary? We're get... Oh, okay. So if every person who lives forever, then we have to birth one less kid. Correct. That'd be another way to do it. But that's not very good for the gene pool. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. All right. So it doesn't work. It doesn't okay, work. It's not, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not the healthiest way to go about it. Right. But let, let me speak more personally about this. If I could live forever, I wouldn't. In my current brain wiring, no, I wouldn't. Because knowing I'm going to die brings meaning to my life. And I, I, I can give examples of this, very clean examples. If you were going to bring flowers to a loved one, you could bring plastic flowers, even silk flowers, which are a little more authentic looking. Would your loved one, how would your loved one feel about that as the measure of your affection? It's diminished a bit relative to if you had brought live flowers, freshly cut flowers. That's a curious fact because the plastic flowers will live forever will exist forever. Why isn't that embraced? The, the silk flowers are a little more realistic and they live for, why isn't that embraced? They don't smell nice. No, <laughs> well, you can get it. You can imagine a perfume. There are ways around that. <laughs> right. Yet, what the people really want is a flower knowing it's going to die. And so you put it in the vase and you watch it. It forces you to notice it every day. Yes, not only because of the smell, but because it's it's alive. It's absorbing water, okay? And typically you buy a flower before it blooms and then it blooms. So you, you, you are following the life arc of that flower through its senescence where the stem can no longer hold up the, the, the flower bud head and it bends over a week later, 10 days later, you pick it up and throw it away. The fact that it was dying, that it was alive and was going to die, magnified your the attention that you give to it. Look at dogs. Dogs live, you know, 10 to 14 years, somewhere around there. Uh, you multiply that by seven, you get the life expectancy of humans. So that's that famous dog years mm -hmm. equation. Anyone who's owned dogs knows that it will jump up and down and lick your face 
if you just went out to get the mail and came back, every day of a dog's life is exciting. What's new today? Uh, they're alive. They're more alive than we are. Is it because they know they won't live as long? Okay, you know, I'm just, you know, probably not, but let's, let's imagine that. It's fun to think that way. Every, we live a week. The dog lives a day. And this, if you look at the math of the life expectancies. And so when I ask myself, how do I want to live my life? I want to live my life like the dog, where I celebrate every day and maximize what I can get out of it, what I can do for others. And this whole talk about search for meaning in life, I take a different tack on that. Are you searching for meaning because you expect to find it under a rock? behind a tree okay uh, go on i'm not going to stop you but i happen to think that we as humans have the power to manufacture meaning in our lives for me i derive meaning from learning more about the world today than i knew yesterday and ideally it's not as much as i'll know tomorrow also i derive meaning by taking a little bit of my life and using it to lessen the suffering of others so that the world is a better place for me having lived in it that for me that brings meaning and i manufacture that. i'm not in search of it i created that and so i uh, one of the final quotes of the book is from the, the great educator horace mann uh, i don't know how well known he is in the uk but we have schools named after him here in the United States, an educator from two centuries ago. Uh, one of his parting addresses to a graduating university class, uh, and I quote, I beseech you, I love that word. We should, hmm. we should bring that word back. Yes, okay. yes. <laughs> Very in its moment. I beseech you to treasure up in your hearts these my parting words. Be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity. I want that on my tombstone. And by the way, mathematic, arithmetically, if knowing you're going to die gives meaning to life, then the prospect of living forever means you have a life with no meaning at all. It wouldn't have to mean that, but arithmetically that's the yeah. answer you get yeah so jim rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public and he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast it's going to be bloody it's going to be nasty but at the same time he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos now we've made this video only available to our viewers go to londonreel.tv forward slash jim watch that immediately I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, do you want to profit from crypto? Then join my DeFi Academy. The Crypto DeFi Academy will help you create generational wealth. But don't take my word for it. Listen to my students. When I first got into crypto, I remember thinking to myself, I need to learn more. Brian Rose, learning crypto, learning DeFi. Gotta do it. I am so grateful that I jumped in and did this. I had to break through some limiting beliefs that I can do this, that I can afford this, that I can be in this. It challenges um, the things that are deeply rooted within us. Joining DeFi Academy has been one of the best decisions I have made on my blockchain journey. This course was a life changer, a game changer, a huge eye opener coming from knowing practically nothing at the speed of the learning over the over four weeks was just fantastic. The information you provided in this class was invaluable. 
I feel far more confident in my next steps. You took complex concepts and made them easier to understand. What's different than so many other ones is it just doesn't tell you what to do. It uh, actually makes you do it. This is for people who are serious about becoming traders. This is the way it should be done. I realized from this learning experience again that it is not about what you learn, but about who you learn it from. The energy was insane. I've, I've never experienced such incredible energy on a live call. Brian Rose, you, you are a legend, my friend. It's the only thing in the market where you can get all information and learn everything what you need to know. Everything is so clear and so well done. And I am um, just forever grateful for this program. It made me feel so much more confident about crypto than I did before. I did not anticipate how passionate I was going to become about it. That's course it's been like a big learning experience for me, not just in the crypto space, but just uh, an overall uh, balance of life. What I've learned is, you know, how to take ownership, you know, of my life in a way that um, I really, I really hadn't before. Yeah, you can't put a price on that, really. I would recommend it to anybody top-notch. Excellence does not come cheap. You know, so if you want excellence, you got to pay for it, but it's so worth it. Pull the trigger. That's what this course is about. You're not going to regret it, really. It's amazing. Thank you, Brian and team. So what are you waiting for? Crypto is happening now. Click the link below, submit your application, and let me mentor you on how to create generational wealth and build the decentralized financial infrastructure of the future.